Okay. Well, when we were sneaking, we were just coming from sneaking with Jim Molinari and Diane Feinstein's office, and my belief is we got to their core because that guy was just ready to explode. He was trying to contain himself. He would have never listened to us as long as he did. We were in there over an hour and a half, and he, he was digesting it. He agreed to meet with me again about issues other than controlled demolition. Because I was trying to make it clear to him that this is only one of the issues, and there are other issues. I gave him evidence from the family members. As a survivor, I spoke to him, and I feel good that we're all here. I'm very happy that you included me, and uh, that we're all doing our duties as Americans. I mean, that's what this is about. Every single person needs to be more of this. Actually, this thing can only inspire them to take their advice. They think this should be on 60 Minutes. Well, I agree, so we need to do that. And every one of us needs to be doing what we're doing today, and that is like just stepping forward, no matter how uncomfortable it is, and going forward with the evidence that we have. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Greg, you're next. I don't know what to say. I thought you were going to ask me. What were your experiences? <clears throat> Well, it's, um, it was a rare kind of conversation. Um, I, I'm not usually in the position of talking to somebody for an hour about something that they just fundamentally disagree with everything that is often. Uh, Who did you talk to? We talked to uh, Jim Molinari, state director for Senator Feinstein, and a colleague, a friend of his, Dan Hansen, Don Hansen, who works uh, worked for decades in the de demolition industry teaches about crime scene evidence analysis for explosives. He had not heard about nanothermite research, and had not heard any of the names of the researchers at the National Laboratory that we ran by him, that was the foundation, previous research that was the foundation of the nanothermite paper. Um, and what he did with his lack of familiarity with these things is to deny that they exist, to deny that nanothermite explosives exist over and over. Um, so it's, it's hard to know what to do with that. It's, uh, you know, it, it's the proverbial talking to a brick wall. And they kept asking questions that they were not going to accept any answer to that we might give them. So it was hard for me to stay engaged after about the first half of the meeting. It was clear that that's what they were going to keep doing no matter what we said. Anything that we used to try to bolster our case or, or reduce the, uh, the inherent plausibility of large conspiracies, such as by talking about the history of Operation Gladio. As soon as they heard what we were saying it was, they would say, well, that's your opinion. They would just uh, do anything they could to instantly reflect, not let it affect their view of the world. It's interesting that when Molinari a couple of times said that uh, Obama has said we're going to look forward and not back, he said it with a smile, and he, he acknowledged it the second time he said it that it was a political reality, not anything that, that proves we're wrong. It, it's just a political reality. And if there's a rational basis for his uh, discouragement of us and our cause, uh, it would be that, that political reality, not, <laughs> not so much what the facts are. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, and Don Hansen. Don Hansen, Don Hansen being um, an explosives expert who had um, worked for 40 some years in explosives and it was a really breathtaking experience to to run up against this kind of just just um, dogmatic, blatant, arrogant denial of anything we tried to present. Just you know, just invalidated. Just you know, for just insist that um, that, that like that aluminothermic explosives don't exist. You know, just blatant um, assertions that um, the, you know. So it wasn't about you know the, um, the facts or evidence or anything. Just. Um, I, the, I, his take-home quote was, um, you have not convinced me, and I will not be convinced <laughs> <laughs> that the buildings were on, on demo. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this is Richard Gage with Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. We're here at One Post Street in San Francisco speaking with State Director for Dianne Feinstein, Senator, um, and he brought uh, with him a 45-year explosives expert, Don Dan, Dan Hansen. Don. Don Hansen, who
who uh, proceeded to shut our presentation down almost immediately uh, without um, being open to it at all, stating, well, I've seen all your stuff, I've read all your stuff, and through the questions and answers it became exceedingly obvious that he hadn't seen or read much of any of it. Uh, he wasn't interested in learning anything, he was simply declaring that uh, it would be impossible. As uh, Jim Hoffman cited, um, I, 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 I am not convinced and I will not be convinced. And this is uh, what we come up against. It is the emotional programming that governs rationality in a lot of people, in all of us, pr presumably, but him more than others in the case of 9-11 evidence, which we brought and presented before we were shut down. Um, but we proceeded to present more evidence uh, at nanothermite, spheres, lateral ejection, free fall acceleration, building seven evidence uh, coming straight down uh, against 40,000 tons of structural steel. All of that evidence was meaningless to him because he could not conceive of how it could be possible that uh, such a conspiracy could happen because after all we would have heard about it by now, somebody would have talked, our government wouldn't do this to us. All of these excuses for not thinking, for not looking at the evidence, for not being awake enough and willing enough to have an open mind, even though they said, oh, I have an open mind, that doesn't make an open mind. It's fascinating the psychology we're up against in presenting the evidence for explosive demolition to people who can't conceive of it. It's like pouring water into a cup that's already full. It can't go in. So I was ready to leave after 10, 15 minutes, uh, but I sat through a whole lot of other denials of, of evidence as we presented other points in addition to the buildings, uh, the hijackers, the uh, airline uh, put options, uh, the, the, the other evidence that we went through. Um, we ran out of batteries. Maybe this one's still going. Cool. Good. Keep and going. So, um, we'll, we'll, we're done with this office, I think. <laughs> yeah, they're probably done with we, us, too. <laughs> <laughs> they're done with us. So, we'll, uh, we'll go to where we can be heard, and we won't stop. Thanks. Okay, fabulous. It's been advised to us that we should take this to 60 minutes because they would air this within a minute. They would be delighted to air this. Well, uh, we know that the mainstream media has not picked up this story whatsoever. <laughs> Why? Perhaps it has something to do with the fact that 90% of the mainstream media, including Fox News, National Geographic, 60 Minutes, uh, is owned by four corporations. Who sits on the boards of those corporations? The same people who sit on the boards of the corporations of the, I, the banking industry, the defense industry, the insurance industry, the oil industry all of whom profited enormously from 9-11. So anyway, uh, we will continue to get this information to them and they will probably continue to, uh, to uh, not air it. <laughs> we, we persevere. Thanks. Okay.